This is Woodman here with another channeled message. Determining the greatest Bible story can be somewhat subjective and vary based on personal beliefs, cultural significance, and religious perspectives. However, one story often highlighted for its profound impact is the story of the Messiah's life, death, and resurrection, particularly focusing on the resurrection. The story of the resurrection is found in the New Testament, particularly in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John which talks about how Jesus Christ, after being crucified and buried, rose from the dead on the third day. This event is central to Christian faith, symbolizing victory over death and offering the promise of eternal life. It is celebrated during the time of Easter and is seen as a cornerstone of Christian belief, reflecting themes of redemption, hope, and divine power. The resurrection story is considered pivotal because it encapsulates the core message of Christianity inspiring countless individuals and shaping the trajectory of overall Christian theology and practice. The concept that believers can embody the essence of Christ or live in the consciousness of Christ is often associated with many teachings on unity with Christ and transformation into his likeness. No doubt that Jesus' death conquers sin on our behalf, and so he becomes our savior. And this emphasizes a profound connection between believers and Christ, suggesting a transformative relationship. When we look at Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. This verse expresses the idea of Christ living in the believer and guiding our lives. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the creation has come. The old is gone, the new is here. This passage highlights the transformation that occurs when a person is in Christ, indicating a significant change in one's identity and essence. Romans chapter 8, verse 29. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be in the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. This verse speaks of the process of becoming more like Christ, reflecting his image in the lives of believers. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. This instruction encourages adopting the mindset and consciousness of Jesus in daily interactions. 1 John chapter 14, verse 17. This is how love is made complete among us, so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. This verse suggests that believers can reflect Christ's nature in their lives, thereby becoming the Christ consciousness. These passages collectively emphasize the idea of believers living in the consciousness of Christ, being transformed into his likeness and expressing his nature through their lives. This concept can also be adapted to our likeness to God. The idea that God is present in each and every one of us who comes from the source is reflected in several parts of the Bible, although it's not always explicitly stated in those exact terms, but nonetheless, that we are all children of God, because we are part of the source, reflects God's presence within us. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple, and that God's Spirit dwells in your midst? This verse suggests that God's Spirit resides within each and every one of us in the believers, implying a divine presence in each individual. Acts chapter 17, verse 28, For in him we live and move and have our being. This verse from Paul's speech in Athens indicates that all existence and life are sustained by God, which can be interpreted to mean that God's presence permeates all aspects of life. John chapter 14, verse 17, He is the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives within you and will be in you. Jesus speaks of the Holy Spirit living within each and every one of us are his believers. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, So God created mankind in his own image. The image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. This suggests a divine imprint on humanity and that God is present in each and every one of us. These passages collectively support the idea that God's presence is deeply intertwined with human existence and spiritual life. Therefore, as we seek to become one with the God that is in us, we can see that this concept even could expand to other different forms of belief, like maybe perhaps Buddhism, where people aspire to become the Buddha, or any religion in which becoming the very highest version of oneself is to embrace 
a spirit of divinity within us. Remember that Christ died for our sins, and so therefore the original sin is gone. The original sin is that which condemned us. If now our sin is taken away from us by Jesus' sacrifice, then the only sins that we can commit at this point are the ones we ch consciously choose to create from this going forward and forward. But if we live a life of righteousness and living within Christ's consciousness, within the Spirit of God, then we can rise to the highest version of ourselves and live the very best life with spiritual teachings to guide us as we become ascended in our own right. If you enjoyed this message, please like, share, and subscribe. If you're new to the channel, welcome aboard. It's a safe space. If you're returning, thank you so much. I love you. Your support for this channel is invaluable. In the name of the Most High God, I ask for peace, health, wealth, prosperity, and abundance, as well as protection for each and every one of you. Woodman signing off. Have a great day. Take care.